Welcome to the She Is Podcast, where we are encouraging and equipping women to be confident in God's promises. I'm Jamie. I'm Sherry. I'm Nicole. We are women in different ages and stages of life. We are active in ministry and are here to have a Bible-based conversation about our identity in Christ. So get ready to be encouraged and equipped as we share with you today. So today... I get to introduce Nicole. She's going to be doing our word for today. Word for today. That's a whole different thing. (laughs) Some of the TBN thing. The word (laughs) of the day. (laughs) But she is bringing the word that the Lord has for her. Because you spoke at the Mom to Mom conference. I did. And so you're going to be speaking from that. And and you are a mom. You're a mom of two littles and a wife and all these wonderful things. And... A dear friend to me. Oh, thank you. I love and you. <laughs> so um, I'm excited to hear from you today. Thank you. Awesome. I'm excited. <laughs> and also among us today yes. is our friend Charlene Boyd. Hello. Yay. Yay. I'm excited <laughs> to be here. <laughs> so she is our um, our pastor's wife. I was trying to figure, yeah, I guess like the first lady of our church. <laughs> yes. Yes. Sorry, she just rolled her eyes at me. <laughs> Maybe don't call her that. Okay. <laughs> nope to self. <laughs> so she'll be joining in our conversation today as well. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so what? how we're going to start out today, uh, just for funsies, <laughs> we are going to um, throw some rapid fire questions at Nicole's. So since oh. she is our mm. speaker today. Get to be in the hot seat, huh? Yes. <laughs> and she hasn't seen these, so this should be fun. Now so. I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing too incriminating here. No deep, oh, what is your deepest, darkest secret? Like, okay. <laughs> well, it's it's going to be this or that. So oh, sweet. Yeah. So, okay. like, basically, you already have... The answer, it's just one of two. Okay. Okay. Easy. All right. Well, let's let's start with this. Okay. (laughs) Okay. Dog or cat? Dog. Okay. Netflix or YouTube? Oh, Netflix. Yes. Phone call or text? Text. With some people. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) She was in the look on her face. That was was priceless. (laughs) Um, Cardio or weights? Weights. Facebook or Twitter? Ew. <laughs> okay, I don't even have Twitter. Agreed. Okay, okay. I mean Instagram. Like I would choose Instagram. Sorry. sorry. Yeah, that's not, that wasn't an option. I know. Okay. Dang it. Um, ice cream cone or snow cone? Ice cream, all the way. Mm. <laughs> yep. Uh, cake or pie? Pie. Swimming or sunbathing? Uh, don't really like either of those. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Um, <laughs> new clothes or new phone? New clothes. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Football or basketball? I don't know how to decipher either of them. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of just sit there and like Colton talks to me and I'm like, okay, don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so you're the supporting role. I'm support. There I'm there working on jewelry and he's there watching TV. <laughs> so teamwork. <laughs> teamwork. Yes. Right. Yes. All right. What's worse, laundry or dishes? Laundry. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> it's the bane of my you existence. You have small people. I do. <laughs> so yeah, laundry's hard. Yeah. 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 It mostly just sits in the dryer until I feel like wearing it, and then I disperse it throughout the house. <laughs> oh, I was sorry. I was thinking of little people in their laundry. <laughs> Them too. <laughs> okay. No. So like, not always. Wait. But, so are they naked until you feel? Like well, you know your grandchildren. Naked? Yeah. How they like to go around the house. They naked. like to be naked. So <laughs> you know. But yeah, it mostly just goes from the dry or from the washer to the dryer to the baskets, and then it takes about seven to ten business days to get it to the drawers. <laughs> <course. laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever's left, of that Whatever's left yeah. of the pile. Mostly it's just socks. <laughs> yeah. Which I can't find the pairs well, to. But wait, if they're naked, then why do you need to do laundry? I know! <laughs> you just hose them down and then start over. Start, I mean, I usually wear underwear. From. Right. <sighs> okay, next question. Okay, next question. <laughs> oh, online shopping or shopping in a store? Online. 
I, really? I know. I'm, I, I know. would not have oh, gone there. I on hate. That one. I hate going to the. St- well, maybe this is because of COVID. Oh. But okay. they don't. You like they don't usually have their um, changing rooms open or oh, whatever, right. and you have right. to wear a mask. And so since COVID. Since I mean even. Since I had kids, I just don't like going to the store because it's... That makes sense. It's like a circus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, anyway. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Your yeah. void. <laughs> All right. Um, money or free time? Free time. Mm. Amusement park or day at the beach? Amusement park. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, cups in the cupboard. Right side up or upside down? Upside down. Yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, here's the toilet paper question. Oh. Over or under? Okay. Because I'm married to Colton, it has to be over. But I didn't really care until I got married. You know what? So. I didn't either. And over now who cares? I do. Over now is I the do. requirement. I know. Let's just face that. <laughs> it just, just requires less thought. Yeah. 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 You know. yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I understand the logic. I just don't always have time to do it yeah. that way. Right. Right. I don't care that much. <laughs> right. Does it take longer to put a toilet paper roll over? Well, when the kids are like under? screaming for well, me, you then to yeah. look at it. You have to, look, have at to it, look at it. Make That's sure it's true. facing the right way. You can't just throw it on there willy nilly, you know? <laughs> yeah. You can't at least I, I, at at I replace the toilet paper. <laughs> yeah. Some people in my house don't replace it. Oh, it's a whole other podcast right there. <laughs> That's a conversation. <laughs> All right, let's just do a few more. Okay. Um, save or spend? Save. Meat or vegetables? Meat. <laughs> Bring me the meat. No okay. wonder you're a boy. I know. <laughs> um, iced coffee or hot coffee? Uh, it depends on the season. Yeah. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. If mm-hmm. it's cold, you have to have hot coffee. I mean. Oh. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then right. and it kind of depends on the time of day. Yeah. Because in yeah. the morning it has to be hot. Yeah. But in the afternoon I'm better with cold. So yeah, mm-hmm. it's true. It Many of us see? can go both ways. I like both <laughs> so. ways, but yeah. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I'm right. just happy with coffee in Yay. general. Like so you did really Nicole, you things. passed. Yay! <laughs> You're Nicole. Yay. I know me. <laughs> you did I'm it. So excited. And now we know you a little bit better. Yay! Yay! <laughs> All right. Well, I'm just gonna pray real quick and then we'll just dive right in mm-hmm. all right it's good all right lord we thank you for today and we ask lord that you just bless our time together mm-hmm. and um and thank you lord for speaking to nicole yes. and for um for the word that she's going to share with us today um, we just thank you for your inspiration and for loving us so wonderfully in mm-hmm. jesus name amen amen amen, amen. Well, I'm excited to talk about what I spoke on at the Mom to Mom conference. And I think it was just really awesome what you put together, Sherry, um, for all the moms. I got to talk to a couple of um, ladies who are around my age, and they said it was just awesome. Aww. So, good so job. Good. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, the title of my message was Life Giver. And um, I talked about... Um, the newborn stage mm. and, and toddler stage. And I know for me, um, I thought labor and delivery was going to be the hard part. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not. <laughs> um, it's, but a <laughs> it's a warm-up. It's a warm-up. Yes. But, you know, when you're having your first baby, you don't know what to expect. And you're like, oh, I'm really nervous about labor and what's it going to be like. And, you know, all mm-hmm. those things. Actually, mm-hmm. I think you drove me home the the like the night before I went into labor with I Kayla. Did. Yes, from from, <laughs> from camp. camp. Yeah, yes. mm-hmm. from we Memorial just, Day camp out. We had just yep. got done playing cards. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I remember I was like burning up in the car. I'm like, oh my gosh, Jamie, I'm so sorry. So did you was know? I blasting the heater? No, oh. I was just like, I think oh. that happens like before you go into labor. Sometimes, see, so you, like you get really hot. I don't know. So I've did heard you that know? before. Did you have but... any idea that you were? No, so I, had, I had two and a half more weeks until Caleb was supposed to be born. So. And, and so well, obviously we were brave enough to be an hour away from home. Oh, yeah. Home, so. yeah. Right. Well, and we had moved um, into our house that weekend. And so I think oh. just all the walking and the lifting and stuff yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of brought the animal? process for yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, so. when I had Lene, I because I, um, I was working full time, but I'd get so tired. And so... Mm. 
I would go home early from work for like the last week or two. Mm. And it was the day that I had her. I worked all day. Yeah. And, and went really? home. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like. Kind of got things started. Huh? I'm like, oh, I guess maybe I should have just. <laughs> well, I guess I didn't want to have her early. But anyway. <laughs> but yes, I can relate. <laughs> yes. Yes. So anyways. Um, but I think the thing that was really hard for me at you know, with Caleb anyway, was just, um, dealing with people's horror stories. Oh. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. so unsolic- unsolicited advice mm-hmm. <laughs> and they mean yeah. well, like yeah. I wasn't angry or anything, but when they would, you know, say things like, Oh, mm-hmm. when you get to the hospital, get an epidural right away. <laughs> Cause it's going to be awful. It's going to be the worst. <laughs> and I, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, I don't receive that for myself. Yeah, I, I'm i declaring that it's going to be an experience full of peace and it's going to go smoothly and it's going to be a celebration because yes. it is. It's a celebration of life that you got to help yeah. bring into the world. Yeah. Um, and so during those times, I would just declare, God, like, I know that you've built me for this. You've built me to be a life giver. Mm-hmm. And um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus on that instead of, <clears throat> excuse me, all the bad things that might could happen, quote unquote. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, like, I think, I think this um, applies even to us. Um, we, you may not be a mom yet, but this is who God created you to be. Mm-hmm. is a life giver to those mm-hmm. who are around you. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we, as moms, we take in, um, you know, this, this new life and we nurture it, we build it, mm-hmm. and then we birth it. And so mm-hmm. I think this can apply to things in the physical and the spiritual. That's so good. As yeah. Christians, we're called to nurture life and to spread it and give it through yep. the love of God. That's yep. right. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. So, Yeah. <laughs> That's you really are a life good. giver. <laughs> That's really good. Um, but uh, the verse that I was speaking from at the conference was 1 Samuel chapter 1. And I just felt like the Lord highlighted Hannah's story to me. She's the mother of Samuel. And I think this story is really interesting. Um, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but... Um, Hannah was the wife of a man from Bethlehem, and he had two wives, actually. Um, One was Hannah and then Peninnah. And Peninnah had children, but Hannah did not. She was barren. And she goes through this whole um, experience where they're at the tabernacle in Shiloh, and they go there every year to sacrifice and pray. And um, Peninnah is just mean. Like yeah. mm-hmm. She's like mocking her because mm-hmm. she doesn't have kids. And every year it's just the same rigmarole. Mm-hmm. And her husband comes to her and says, am I not worth more than yeah. 10 sons to you? And he always gave her a double portion when they were, you know, celebrating at the sacrifices. Mm-hmm. And, but even still, she's like, I just want a kid, you know, I want yeah. a child. Yeah. And so after the sacrifice, um, she goes into the tabernacle and is praying, and but her lip her lips are moving, but there's no words coming out. And so the high priest comes to her and says, "Hey, lady, like stop being drunk." <laughs> Pretty much, I'm paraphrasing here. Right, right, right. Um, yeah. And she, right. but she doesn't react in anger or offense. Um, she says, "No, I'm I'm not drunk. I'm praying to the Lord. I'm pouring out my heart." Mm-hmm. And Eli, the high priest, says, may it be, whatever you're praying for, may the Lord give it to you. And so when she goes home, um, she gets pregnant, and she has Samuel. Mm-hmm. And she promised the Lord that if he would give her a son, mm-hmm. that she would dedicate him to the Lord for all his days. Yes. So that's what she did. And I was just thinking, like, as a new mom, mm-hmm. I don't know if I could do that. Mm-hmm. Like. Right. You know, she she takes him to the tabernacle after he's been weaned, and he she basically leaves him there with right. Eli the priest. Right. And after what he said to her, I don't know. I'm like, if I would trust that man yeah, yeah. to true. take him, I'm like, dude, I that, never thought of yeah, that. Yeah, I haven't either. either. Yeah, wow, it's an I interesting thought. Wow, yeah. that gave me so. Oh, <laughs> I mean, because you can you imagine? Like, he's probably right. two or three years old at that point. Golly, Nicole, I hadn't so, thought about that. That just popped in my head. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good point. Um, it is. Golly. Okay. But, like, she had to totally trust the Lord with Samuel. Mm-hmm. She had to 
basically sacrifice her dreams. Mm -hmm. You know, what's, you know, having him around the house growing up, you know, watching him, you know, obviously not riding a bike, but you know, some of those milestones that they Mm -hmm. go through. Mm -hmm. And she wouldn't have been able to be around for those things. They, she got to see him once a year, and that's it. Wow. Yeah. Well, I so. think this hit me at the at the conference too. Is that um, that her her desire was to give life. It mm-hmm. wasn't to have a son. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, right, right. Like in her household, that that wasn't what she was after. Mm-hmm. She she wanted to to bring life into the world. That's mm-hmm. really good. And I had never thought of it that way. Well, it, it that's awesome. We don't, I mean, I guess when we dream about having kids, you, you dream about, you know, mm-hmm. having, having one in your <laughs> home, <laughs> yeah. watching right. them grow. Right. And that's, that's not the vision that she had in mind because mm-hmm. she was so willing to say, if, if you grant me this request, God, I will give him back to yes. you. And not just like something that we do in baby dedications mm-hmm. where we mm-hmm. dedicate our baby to the Lord and then we take them home with us. Like she right. actually right. like <laughs> physically, physically left gave yes. up her baby. Yes. So, yes. Mm. Golly. Wow. I wonder where that comes from. Cause you know, when we have a newborn, you come to church and yeah. you do a dedication service sometimes. Right. So, like, I wonder if that story is where that came from. I know I that know. when, uh, Pastor Jim does mm-hmm. baby dedications. He always goes to the story of Hannah. That's mm-hmm. awesome. And Elkanah yeah. and her giving her baby. And yeah. so symbolically, it mm-hmm. was like a way that we're supposed to have that attitude. But mm-hmm. we do get the blessing of taking the baby home. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh. So mm-hmm. anyways, just trusting the Lord is what I really got out of this mm-hmm. um, portion of scripture. And and I did talk a little bit at the conference about um, going through postpartum depression mm-hmm. and anxiety. Mm-hmm. Um, and I did, you know, I had that for about three months until I realized what was going on. And then I was just, you know, I just prayed through that. It was a season, but I had an amazing support system. I have an amazing support system. <laughs> um, and my in-laws, who are more like my best friends, and my family. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But it was really hard sometimes. Like, I thought I was going crazy, honestly, sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I, you know, I, I when I wasn't sleeping, obviously. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Right. But even more so because, like, every time I would fall asleep, I would, like, jerk awake and like look at the baby and like is his chest moving like is he breathing Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because you know they like scare you to death at the hospital like with SIDS and like don't do this and don't do this and really don't do that and like I remember thinking at the hospital like I don't want to go home because right you're actually gonna like trust me to take this baby (laughs) home seriously (laughs) right um but I just had to learn to trust the Lord in that and Mm -hmm. like chill out (laughs) Because mm-hmm. they're more resilient than they you think they are. They so. are, yes. They're very bendy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so if they fall down, they're not going to die. Yeah. So I had to learn that, but I was, like, super freaked out at first. So I don't know. <laughs> well, but you're right because they do. They give you all these warnings. Mm-hmm. They give you all this information. But then you go home, and just like you said, you're not sleeping. Mm-hmm. You're not eating properly, yeah. so you're malnutritioned, you're s- sleep-deprived, <laughs> and then you've got this little baby that you're responsible for that nobody, there's no way anyone can prepare you for that. Yeah. No. Yeah. And then and then people wonder why you've lost your mind. I know. <laughs> right? I mean, uh, yeah. but malnutrition makes our mind cloudy anyway. Yeah. So then you add, you add the not sleeping, you add the the concern for your baby you add your body is changing again i mean how can you be expected to have clear thoughts and clear understanding i mean for most of us the first few months are a blur after we bring the baby home yeah and that's what i hear a lot of moms say is man if i could get that time back i would really like to know what that was like yeah because we're there and we're present but but we're trying to heal and there's so much going on in our minds and so I think that we need to give ourselves more grace. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah. And the thing is, no matter 
because everybody who's got children remembers it, Mm -hmm. but somehow we don't remember it. So so no matter how much you can say, oh, it's going to be this crazy thing, Mm -hmm. you just don't understand it till you walk a mile in those shoes. Yeah. And then God gives us the grace to remember it, but not remember it. (laughs) Remember the good things. Yes. 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 But, um... I wanted to read another scripture. So in, in 1 Samuel 2, um, Hannah actually like basically has a praise fest. Um, mm-hmm. She's just thankful to the Lord for everything that he's blessed her with. And one of the verses um, really stood out to me. It says, He will guard the feet of his faithful servants, um, but the wicked will be silenced in the place of darkness. And to me, I really felt like I really clung on to that verse um, when I was going through all the postpartum. It's like, God is going to guard my feet. He will guard my heart and my mind. And the lies that the enemy is trying to throw at me will be silenced. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah. I I learned how to release my kids back to the Lord. Mm. Um, You know, and Hannah, she dedicated Samuel to the Lord. and, And we do the same thing, like, with the baby dedication. But I think you have to keep doing it. Mm-hmm. like for the rest of their lives. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, you know, we're living in really scary times right now. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the more, um, the more I've thought about, you know, all the things going on, I'm not going to get into, you know, mm-hmm. all of that, mm-hmm. but you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> mm-hmm. We have to release them back to the Lord. And that yeah. can be really hard to do. Mm-hmm. It can be really hard. Yes. I feel like um, it's something you almost have to practice because mm-hmm. it doesn't Absolutely. happen that one time when they're babies and mm-hmm. it <laughs> Sherry and I both know uh-huh. you don't have you don't stop releasing them even when they're grown up people. Yeah. <laughs> with with little people of with their little own. people of yeah. their own. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. so then we're releasing all of that. And so you're right. It, mm-hmm. and it is a practiced mm-hmm. and you're practicing that and you're doing really well with that. Absolutely. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well and Thank I you. I I, it just came to my attention. I don't know that we've made mention of this that Charlene is Nicole's mother in law. Oh, yeah. Yes. And the I think people know that, but no. I, well, there, we, there, we have other listeners. Yeah, if yes. anybody yes. does it, yeah. come to just Refuge to City. Nicole is my daughter in law and the luckiest <laughs> mother in law in the world. Oh. And she gave me the two greatest grandkid children in the world. So. <laughs> just wanted to throw that little blurb in there for yes. everyone. Yes. That was yeah. good. good yes. But yeah, um, and just the verse that I closed with at the conference was Philippians four four through nine. Um, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, mm-hmm. present your requests to God. And that's another verse that I really clung to during that time. It's just I, I've all I, I think I talked about this in earlier podcasts, but just my battle with fear as a mm-hmm. young woman, and mm-hmm. even still, like it's it's a choice to believe God mm-hmm. or to walk in fear. Mm-hmm. And so, like sometimes daily, I have to say I choose faith over fear. That's right. Yeah. Um, and sometimes I think we believe that no one can love our kids more than we do, the more than we do, but God mm-hmm. loves them even more than us. And so how much more is he going to take care of them? Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, like what you were saying about um, these times that we're living in and having to rededicate <laughs> rededicate them back to the Lord is yeah. is that we, we like to be in control and yes. be... <laughs> mother head <laughs> over the kids yes but god has the vantage point that we don't have yeah, yeah. and he has placed us in mm-hmm. in that role to um to protect them but he is the one over us yeah, that's right <laughs> that's so good <laughs> and so we can't um be so afraid of what is going on in the world that we can't release our kids back to God because mm-hmm. he's, I mean, I guess he's like the ultimate mother hen, right? He is. Because he You're wants right. to gather yeah. us. Yeah, that's right. Um, like, like a but hen with the wings. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. 
under his wing and and yeah we're under his feathers in his yes. protection mm-hmm. so yes. that's that's the position that we're all in as God's yeah. kids mm-hmm. and so yes so true. we are blessed with these kids that he has given to us here on this earth mm-hmm. yeah um, but that's that's our um, just one role is to is to take care of them and to nurture them mm-hmm. but he's entrusted them to us Yes. They came from him. Yes. When I just think about what Hannah got to experience, like how proud she was, yeah. because Samuel was one of the greatest judges mm-hmm. and prophets in Israel. Yes. Mm-hmm. He was. And so yes. she got a part of that legacy because she was mm-hmm. obedient to the mm-hmm. Lord. Mm-hmm. So how much, like, how proud of you are of your kids? Right. Like, yeah. and what are they going to do when they grow up? Mine are, mine are four and three right now. So mm-hmm. they're just starting out their journey with the Lord. But mm-hmm. I get to be a part of that legacy with them. Mm-hmm. So... That's true. Yeah. That's awesome. That's <laughs> well, true. and because of her prayer to be a life giver, mm-hmm. that was answered, and all of Israel yes. was changed. Received yeah. life. Yes. Yeah. Yes, they so did. Good. They did. <laughs> right. Really, that's where Samuel's the one who anointed King David, who mm-hmm. was the man after God's own heart. Yes. And not perfect, definitely sinned, and yet... Samuel's the one who was directed to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and brought the judgment and also the grace of God to right. the nation. Right. So. right. Mm-hmm. It's just awesome to Pretty think cool. about. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for tuning in to She Is Podcast by Refuge City Church. We pray that you have been encouraged and equipped in knowing who you are in Christ. If you are wanting to have a personal relationship with Jesus, pray this with me. Dear Jesus, I know that you love me. I ask you to forgive my sins. Please come into my heart to stay and help me to hear your voice and grow in you. In Jesus' name, amen. We would like to hear from you. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast to hear more from us every week. Connect with us on Facebook and Instagram. The links are in the show notes. Thanks for tuning in, and remember until next time, you are a life giver.